Hello and welcome my beautiful beans. Today we're going to be learning how to use VC Face. So I know a few of you are interested in this tutorial, so by the end of this tutorial you will know everything you need to know about VC Face, covering all the basics from lighting to how to set up your character and bring it into Streamlabs OBS. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Check this out. Oh no, I lost my chair. Bro, wait, is it coming back? Hello? Okay, yeah, we're back. We're good. Oh my gosh. Yo. <laughs> okay, sorry. Let's go. Okay, so the first order of business is to download VC Face. So I'm going to link this in important links down below. You're going to want to make sure that you download the latest version because I don't know if VC Face does automatic updates, but I was having an issue with a tutorial I was following a few days ago and I figured out it's because I didn't have the latest version. So if you're ever having issues, make sure you have the latest version of VC Face. You'll go to this page, you'll scroll down to the download button and you will go ahead and click show in folder then you're going to extract the files and double click on that folder and now you have vc face so uh, this is the application i'm going to double click and launch vc face cool so i already have my avatar in here but if you were going to add a new one you go to the plus button and what i use to make my avatar is vroid studio if you're interested in vroid studio i have a ton of tutorials on my channel for helping you get started with that program so what you're going to want to do is select your vrm which would have been exported from vroid studio here mine is i'm going to click it and then i have it in and it should show up so then you'll click on your character then you'll have it so the first order of business is going to be to choose which camera you have. Which camera are you using? I'm using the C922 Pro Stream Webcam. This, I will link this same webcam I have below in important links. You do not need to use a webcam to become a VTuber if this is the first time you're stumbling across a tutorial like this. I do have a video out for how you can become a VTuber without a webcam. I will link that in a card up above. So if you're interested, go ahead and click that link now. Otherwise, if you have a webcam, let's proceed forward. For this, I just leave it blank as I don't think it matters too much. Camera frame rate, the best thing to do if your computer can handle it is gonna be 30 FPS. If your computer cannot handle it, you have a toaster computer, I would do something lower. I would recommend having your frame rate to 30 FPS and turning to low quality before I changed my FPS. So if you absolutely have to choose, keep your FPS up higher and do lower quality tracking. There is literally a toaster version, no eye gaze or expression tracking. So if you have a PC that really can't handle a lot, this is probably going to be your best option. Again, go ahead and play with these settings and see what works the best for your computer. What do you think works smoothly? I'm not going to be able to tell you that. That's all going to be up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and choose high quality Wink support because I have a very good PC that can support that. As for your microphone, make sure you select the one that you are currently using so it can lip track. Another thing you can do if you would like to, which I just tried out, you can click recommended settings if you don't want to mess with any of this. Completely up to you, but for me, I know that I can support high quality stuff here. But if you do click recommended settings, it might take a while to load. You might think your VC face is crashing, but just give it a few minutes and hopefully it will go through for you because that's what it did for me. If you wanted to remove your avatar for any reason, here, if you wanted to get rid of them, if you had a bunch of test versions in here, here is the language down here if you needed to change that for any reason. So after you have all your basic set up let's move on to clicking start cool so i just took away my 3 teen that i was using before if you're interested in 3 teen i also have a video on that a full tutorial actually now we're using vc face i have to have 3 teen clothes because you can only use one program at a time with your camera that being said if you ever have issues getting your camera to work make sure it's not being used anywhere else like streamlabs or obs or with any other sort of program because it won't work if you have it being used literally anywhere else so the first tab we're going to go over is the settings tab if you have a leap motion this is where you can control your leap motion settings i'm not going to go over this because i do not have a leap motion so i will not be able to give you advice there but if i do get a leap motion i will definitely be making updated videos on how to get those working in all the different programs next you're going to want to go to effect settings this is where you can affect different things like lighting and the way your vtuber looks on screen this is really nice because there's really not a whole lot of options like this in 3 teen there's definitely a lot more in vc face so i am going to talk to you about the different types of camera settings and when they would be best used. First you have Bloom. Bloom gives you that really beautiful anime aesthetic look. Usually it's a pretty heavy glowy lighting system. You have your whole color wheel here so if you want to emit some sort of aura you can make it really really bright and pretty and I, uh, I absolutely love Bloom. It's one of my favorite lighting settings to use. Again especially for anime characters but just go ahead and play with this and find something that works well for you. You also have sliders down here which can make you literally like exploding with color or you can have it as little as you want. So again just play with all these different sliders in and see what looks the best. And if you ever need to reset your settings, you can go ahead and click reset down there if you get lost in uh, all the beautiful color stuff you can do, but I'm just going to
gonna go ahead and do a little bit of light bloom so we can have a beautiful look. I've tried messing around with this don't cut at the edge and I'm actually not quite sure what sort of difference it does or has. So if anybody knows, go ahead and drop that down in the comments to help other people out. Next, we're gonna go to ambient occlusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable ambient occlusion. Basically what it does is it allows for there to be more intense shadows around your character. It's kind of weird with VC face because there's always this really weird shadowing around the eyes. This happens in multiple programs. So again, this might not be something you want to use or again, you can use it, but maybe just use it very lightly. Again, you have different qualities. If your PC is not that great, you might want to go with lower quality. It absolutely depends. And again, you do have a reset button here. Next is lens distortion. I'm going to go ahead and enable that. This is something if I guess you want to troll or meme or play around with it. I also have this in, uh, in my Unity setting. Some of you have seen it on stream, but there's a lot of different stuff you can do if you really want to meme with it. So again, go ahead and play with these things if you want to just see what your options are. But I'm going to go back and reset settings and disable lens distortion. Next we got chromatic aberration. This makes it so it's sort of like this fuzzy blurry like film feel. I like this sometimes. I don't think it looks that great in VC face. I've definitely liked it in other settings better, but that's what chromatic aberration is. Next is color. So if you're in a certain room or if you have a certain background, for example, you can see back there. I don't have transparency on right now, but you can see back there that the lighting is a little bit pink in the Sims room that I made. If you're interested in making backgrounds of the Sims 4, I also have a video for that. You can click that card up above if you're interested. But this color temperature could be really good if you need to set a certain color temperature for you to match and blend more with your surroundings. It really helps with setting your character in the environment and making your VTuber feel more realistic. Next we have grain. Grain sort of in allows that fuzzy feeling. Again, totally something that is going to be up to you aesthetic wise. You can change the size of the grain. You can change how much it's sort of put together, spread apart. Now again, this is all aesthetic. You know, do you want this sort of feeling? I don't know. It's totally up to you. It, maybe you're telling a scary story and you want to have a like really fuzzy screen. Maybe you're telling a creepy pasta or something like that and you really want to set a certain mood. So you would enable your green and you would do lens distortion and you'd make things all like Ooh, and creepy and maybe we would get really dark with our ambient occlusion and maybe we would really really drown out the color here maybe this would be literally perfect for telling something like a creepy pasta. The creative routes you can take with your different lighting settings could really apply to a lot of different things. So really just keep this in mind when you are playing with everything. Last we have halftone. Halftone gives you that really weird, uh, I don't even know what to call it, like pop vibe. You can get, you can do a lot of really crazy stuff with this. Use it to your advantage as a creative person. Use it depending on the different things you're doing. You can also use opaque background, which makes you either transparent or not. Lots of cool options in the effects settings, so really play around with that and try to use it to set up the atmosphere for your stream for depending on what you're doing, telling a story, playing a game, anything of those matters. Next, let's go over our expression settings. So here, you have hotkeys connected to each face expression you want to do. So Control Shift F1 seems a little bit lengthy, so I'm just gonna change that. When you click on that, it will be recording your keystrokes. I'm gonna click N for my neutral. Next, I'm going to assign my fun, and I'm gonna do F for fun. Angry, I'm gonna do A. Joy, I'm gonna do J. So there you go. Now you see that you have hotkeys assigned to certain expressions. So now I'm clicking F for fun, clicking A for angry. Keep in mind that you do have to double tap. So I'll have to go out. When I click F, I'm going to want to click it again to reset because if I click F plus A, it's going to do fun plus angry. This could be really fun because then you can combine face expressions, which makes it look kind of silly, which again, you can use to your comedic or entertainment value. So the best thing instead of going back to neutral would just be to unclick the keystroke that you just clicked. So if I'm on fun, go ahead and click F again to reset back to your neutral. All this other stuff is just extra settings that you could play play with if you wanted. Eye blinking. Do you want eye blinking available for this expression? I do. I really do because it looks way better. I don't see why you wouldn't have eye blinking on. Maybe if it was serious expression. Again, eyebrow tracking as well. You can check on or off while you're on that specific expression. So I'm on fun right now. I can uncheck this and now it's not tracking my eyebrows. Keep all these different things in mind. What do you want? You can go ahead and play with it. Hold. If you check this box right here called hold, this is means that you you have to hold down the key to keep the face expression going. Again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because if you're playing a game, it might be a little difficult. If you're doing just chatting, that may be a time where you want to hold. Otherwise, switch back to toggle so that it will just toggle on and off. That is my preferred setting. Transition time, you could turn up if you wanted it to take a while to transition back and forth. So again, it makes it a little bit more smoother and compared to quicker, it will switch right away. So you can see switch, 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 transition time up a lot smoother. Again, this I think helps a lot with the realism, so I would recommend it. Again, though, totally up to you. Play with the settings, see what you like. Lastly, we're going to go over our general settings. 
The first option here is auto blink. This basically means, and again, if you want to move your window around, you can go ahead and just click and drag. Auto blink is if you want your character to blink at random intervals. I personally like when it tracks my blinking real time, so I'm going to keep that off. When I look down, I can set it to auto blink. The reason it has this setting is because sometimes when you look down, your camera might not be able to really capture when you are blinking. So I would do, I would change to when you're looking down to have it on auto blink because otherwise it can get kind of weird and kind of glitchy. So again, auto blink, I would turn on for when you're looking down and then when you're looking up, it'll track to your regular blinking. Right here, you could turn on link eye blinks if you don't want it to ever wink, if you don't want your character to look weird. You can check on eye blinks if you kind of blink weirdly and you keep getting these weird results where like one eye is closing and the other is staying open. Some people just blink like that, so I would link eye blinks if you don't want that to happen. For smart wink, I don't personally like smart wink because I don't think it's really great at actually tracking which eye is winking well. I think it's easier to keep that off and just wink naturally. Again, play with the settings, see what works best for your face because it might be different. Smooth auto blink, you don't really need to touch. Fake turning something like this on, look at camera, will keep your irises always looking towards the camera. Again, personal choice, you can also have it follow your head movement if you want it to stay with where you're directly looking. Again, this is up to you, I kind of like the looking at the camera. I personally will probably just keep fake gaze off because I really just like the way it is naturally. If you wanted to toggle your lip sync for some reason, you could assign that to a hotkey. I'm not going to be doing that because again, I don't personally like that setting. Always use full lip sync animation, I would keep that checked on. Hybrid lip sync mouth tracking, I would keep checked on. Reset pose on track loss. I'll keep this all on. Right here is if you want your bones to be affected by wind in VC face. So again, if you have added bones to your hair, maybe you haven't. If you have not, I do have a video on how to add bones to your hair in VRoid Studio, so you can go ahead and click that if you're interested. But enabling wind will give it a wind effect where you can set up what kind of wind you want. Face tracking disabling. You can turn this off if you want it to not face track. So maybe you just want lip sync. Again, if your computer can't do that or if you don't have a webcam, this would be a possible option. Again, I think it makes your avatar look literally soulless. So again, totally up to you though, depending on your situation. Expression detection. So this is how much do you want it to be able to track your expression? How wild do you want it to be? You can do none if you don't want it to express anything extra. You can do simple if you want it to just really try to just track what your face is doing. And experimental. This one's actually really crazy because you can actually record what you want for each of these different face expressions. So for example, for Joy, if I want to have a open mouth, I can click calibrate while it's happening. Click stop recording after that. And now it should be linked when I click J to literally what I just did. So now Joy has a really wide mouth face expression. So the whole the whole expression things, you're going to want to experiment with it. It tells you at the top how it works. So if you ever get confused to how it works, go ahead and read that up above. So you can hopefully find some clarity on exactly how it works. I haven't messed with it too much, so I don't know everything about it. But hopefully that will at least get you started. The rest of this stuff is not super important. You can cap your frame rate lower if you want want it to run smoother on your PC. If you're recording, I'd recommend 60. If you're streaming, you might want to try 30. Again, it totally depends what your PC can handle, but I think 60 should be fine for the most part. But you can see the difference in how smooth it is. So 30 is a little bit laggier, but it might help your PC out if you have a not great one. 60 is if you need to be smoother device here so you can choose your microphone again here and your webcam right here. These other settings are for extensions we don't have so we're not going to worry about most of this stuff here. Again that's advanced stuff that's not super important for you right now to get started. All these settings over here are going to detect pretty much how sensitive things are so if I turn my eyebrow strength way low it's really not detecting my eyebrow movement but if I turn it up it's going to detect it a lot more. I personally really like having the sensitivity up for a lot of things even with my eyes and stuff because I think it makes your character a lot more expressive. So I'm just going to turn pretty much a lot of stuff way up. Um, so again, I just have a lot more movement, a lot more freedom, and a lot more is going on. Again, totally up to you. Play with it. See what you like the best. Body stiffness is how quick pretty much your body's going to move or how reactive it is. Sometimes it gets a little out of hand, so I might turn this up. All these general settings are different things to play with and experiment with. If you want to reset everything because you messed something up, you can click factory reset at any time. You can also apparently bring audio into VC face if you want audio playing in the background. So I'm going to bring my outro in so you can hear it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So if you wanted to bring audio in for any reason, that is a way you could do it. You could also show your tracking points if, with your camera if you wanted to see where your tracking points are. Mine's not on right now. That is an option. Anyways, that's most of what you need to know for general settings. Let's go ahead and move on to 
to avatar selection. For avatar selection, this is where you pretty much can manage where you're adding your avatars, what avatars you're adding. Again, I have mine in here. You can go ahead and select and change avatars out here. You can also remove avatars in this section. Help is a good place to look if you feel like you are struggling to understand something. There's a few different UI tools here. For things for you to look at, this is a whole tutorial section that you can also go through. Again, if you get stuck with things or want to learn more about VC face. Another trick to know is that you can click R to reset your camera at any time on your keyboard. So if you're ever, your tracking ever goes off, go ahead and look at your camera, hit R and it will reset everything. For the calibration, the different clear calibration, load calibration, and save, I've messed with this. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Again, that's where you maybe want to go to the help page or go to their website and look in what it is. Here's another way to reset position. You can click here. Like I said, you also have R on your keyboard, which is a hot key to reset. Mirror motion. I like mirror motion a lot better. You can turn this off if you wanted to do the opposite, but I like mirror much better because it feels like I am more in control. So I would turn on mirror motion. Another option you have is drift back to normal. So if I'm looking over here, here and I have this turned on, my avatar will slowly start drifting back to the normal position. I don't really like that. I don't think it works that well. So I am just not going to use that setting. Track leap motion. This is if you have leap motion. Again, I do not have leap motion, so I will not be able to help you out with that. Lastly, to bring your avatar from VC face into Streamlabs OBS, and I will drop this link down below if you don't have this program. This program is how you are going to output your model for either streaming or recording. I'm going to go ahead and click plus on sources and do a game capture. Add source, add new source. I'm going to call this VR Saya VC face. And then you're going to go ahead and make sure you check this allow transparency box. That's very important. Go to capture specific window VC face. Done. Now, as you can see, the UI is still laying on top. If you want to get rid of that is go ahead and click this little button. See my mouse right here. There is a little X thing next to your FPS and TR. Go ahead and click that and that should be gone. You can bring this back if you want. That little thing will remain there. So what I would do is just move my source slightly over and narrow it down and make it smaller. Now everything should be working and you are ready to start streaming or recording for your YouTube video. Oh well, how well. Welcome, you made it to the end of the tutorial. I'm so proud of you, you've done great. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other advice or tips about VC Face, please feel free to share your thoughts about it in the comments. If you want to catch me live, you can find me over at twitch.tv forward slash sapphire. If you'd like to join a Discord community filled with VTubers, a great place to do that would be in the Discord link down below. So thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye! Bi I did, literally just said video. I'll see you in the next... Okay, goodbye. <laughs>